Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, with the video demo supporting our continuously integrated data center presentation called Bootstrapping Data Centers at the Edge and Enterprise. This is the demo that supports that presentation, uh, which is listed in this URL. Uh, please check that out first. It really puts everything we're doing in context. It explains use cases and, and how all this stuff fits together. The purpose of this demo is to actually show you it in process and make it and make it work. And this this vet, this demo is actually part of a nine chapter demo. Don't worry, you don't have to watch all nine chapters. Uh, we're actually breaking it into two high level summaries, and then I will do detailed deep dives into each one of these other units. They, they could each take 15 minutes uh, and we're trying to, to do uh, these two chapters, the summary and the bootstrapping, and about 20 each. So that's what we're, we're targeting here. This is the CICD summary video, which is your suggested starting point. So you are in the right place. This is your first video. Uh, after this, check out the video on how we actually set it up. Uh, I'm actually starting at the end of that configuration step. And so check that out and if you want more, Everything we're doing has actually um, been open source and you can see the build scripts, setup scripts, all the components and pieces and replicate it yourself. Uh, that's what the individual chapter videos are designed to do. So to give you a, a setup, here's what we've already done. We've already uh, created a server. In this case, we're using Linode, um, which are virtual machines. It's super fast and easy. We can automate those great. Uh, RackN, of course, focuses on the physical layer of the infrastructure. Uh, and we are amazing at that. Uh, in this case, it's super fast and easy to do it with virtual machines. And so we're gonna do the demo that way because it's easier to compress the time. But what we've done is we've gotten a server, installed Digital Rebar on it using the, the stack script cloud init process. We have that automated script has uploaded all of the content libraries and configurations, everything. It's uh, then used uh, Terraform as part of our new context feature where we actually create a machine and then run Terraform for that machine. That creates the machine, those machines check in, we transfer control to the machines and then let the context install. Check out the, the setup video for that, we go into that in some detail. From there, we are just about to do the next step which is set up all the servers that are gonna be managed by each one of those sites. So those sites are distributed across the US we're going to attach machines to each one of those, once again, using Terraform to bootstrap the machines in Linode, but then allowing the machines to connect into Digital Rebar at each site. We'll see how all that stuff fits together. And then we'll install Kubernetes on them. Uh, and then we'll have a little bit of fun, time permitting, on uh, actually doing some version set work. At this point, that whole system has actually been configured and set up and we're ready to go. So this is the endpoints list. These are our four sites. You can see we've already applied pieces. We've patched the systems to the new versions. This is one of those versions. So it has its license. It has the version set up. It has the workflow. It has a ton of, of workflows in it. Um, it has the catalog has been set and corrected. Um, one of the things we showed in the, in the setup video is actually conforming the site to the correct version and removing things that weren't supposed to be there. It's just as important as adding things that are supposed to be there. So we've gotten everything in place now so that we can actually build up the sites. This is equivalent to getting Digital Rebar running on a site, say putting on a switch or bootstrapping that, that service and then literally turning on the machines. Uh, so in this case, what I'm gonna do is come in here and all I have to do is pick the workflow here that does a site expand. Actually, this isn't the first thing I need to do. Um, what I need to be able to do is site expand expects us to have a cluster size of three. If I look at this managed endpoint over here, my cluster count is zero. That keeps us from trying to create everything at once. So I need to go in, edit. We have a version set for a cluster size of three. I'm going to save that. Uh, I disabled. So now you're seeing we're going to do a little bit of work to update the version set. Go ahead and that one thing is added. Uh, and it's gonna go through and patch the uh, profile. So if I come over to the profiles, check out my global profile here. This is where I'm storing my cluster count. It's already been set to three behind the scenes. Uh, and so if I wanted to see what was actually going on, I could check the logs out uh, and see it's actually making the changes and, and figure out what, what 
um, is happening behind the scenes to make all this stuff go. Let's see, so I'm now over here. I now have my cluster count set. So I could actually set it to five and, and have even bigger clusters for this demo um, just by changing that one variable. So in this case, I wanna go in, I'm going to site expand these systems. Uh, as soon as I switch workflows, um, the runner is running on the endpoint, calls Terraform, applies Terraform. Um, it's literally running the site, the, the Terraform script that used to build the digital rebar endpoint. And now since I've changed the cluster size, it's doing it with three machines. Um, pulled the state file from digital rebar. Um, boy, there is a whole bunch of great information about how the way we use context. This is not that demo. This is the CIDC demo. Um, but there is a taste of it because we are using that technology here to literally build the systems up. Um, as it's going through this process, uh, you can see we're, we're waiting for the Terraform apply. As soon as that completes, it's actually gonna go into a waiting state to wait for the new machines to come up uh, and start checking in. Uh, in the background, we've literally now booted, effectively booted the, all the machines in the remote sites. If I was to check those consoles, they are now uh, going through the process. They're gonna run um, that script and we'll um, then check in and, and start. Actually, this is, we're not, we're not even there yet. We're waiting for things to boot, which is fine. Um, actually, most of these sites have already uh, completed. And if I refresh here, you'll see this, the systems are already checking in. Um, remember, we're running in four different Linode data centers uh, to make this demo work. So they have slightly different performance characteristics. Uh, as you would expect different data centers to have. But literally each one is building that full site. If I come back over to the central site and check machines, you can see the three machines are checking in and going through the process right now. If I come back to the manager, everything is mirrored in real time. So as machines are created on those remote sites, we see it over here. Uh, and that's literally the, how the manager works. This is creating a single pane of glass for all of my data centers, it's aggregating together. I get updates in real time, um, which is a key element of how this would work. So now I have a 12 system data center. I'll jump, I'll jump over and show you. In this case, this is where we are. We've just created this infrastructure. Uh, if I want, I can now come over to say here and I can start building my Kubernetes cluster. In this case, I'm gonna build K3S. To do that, the first step is I need to uh, put all the machines in a shared profile. If I do that over here, you'll see it's already updated the screen. Uh, it's identified that that profile was applied on the machines in that cluster. I can come over here, and if I then start the workflow for my to build my K3S cluster, it'll start the process immediately. That's how Digital Rebar works when workflows are started. And uh, simultaneously, you're going to get live updates of every activity going on in that remote cluster back against this uh, manager system. So we can see the whole system operating in both places. Fantastic, powerful capability. Now, I did everything on that remote site because that meant that I actually have remote autonomy. I'm not dependent on the manager site to do anything in this case. I actually have control and capability um, at the edge, we never compromise that. That's an important point. However, I do also have control from the manager. So if I was to take the other systems in our deployment over here, not central, but the actual, the other servers that aren't in the cluster, I can do the same actions here on behalf of those other data centers. So in this case, what I can do is I can come in, I can apply the same K3S profile so I've now applied those profiles. Let me jump over to that one of those endpoints. So here is US East. I haven't logged into that one yet, so let's log in. So now what you'll see is I have those machines. I've applied the profile, that looks great. And what I wanna do over here is come back and say, well, you know what, let's actually go through and I wanna install a Kubernetes cluster on those sites. So I can take the same action and install the Kubernetes uh, cluster from here. That is actually gonna proxy forward into the other rebars. So 
this, this effect is actually setting attributes on the machines that are not set on the copy here in the manager. They're actually forwarded to be acted on in the remote data centers. Uh, and the thing that's important to keep in mind here, whoops, and I missed one of the uh, machines, so let me fix that. This one did not get clicked, so I need to make sure I get my profile there. Otherwise, it will be unhappy. Uh, and so, when I do this, I'm not creating one Kubernetes cluster. I'm actually starting the workflows on the systems in three different data centers, which means I'm building three different Kubernetes clusters in the remote sites in parallel. And you'll notice the, the Kubernetes cluster is already built and it's just done. Um, we can check in on that in a minute. But if I start the workflow here, then those systems are going and I'm literally now getting live updates of the Kubernetes cluster being installed um, live and going through that process. So it's being done in the remote site, right? I didn't touch anything here. The actions I took at the manager automatically got translated into the remote site. It's going through its Kubernetes install process. It's collecting data in the profile, just like you would expect. And I'm seeing live updates of that system as it's being done back in the manager. So I have control in both locations. It's very, very important in how the overall system is designed that we have that type of control of the infrastructure uh, to manage it, to see it, um, and to have that, that type of single pane of glass distributed infrastructure capability. And now literally I have four Kubernetes clusters built in four different data centers. Uh, we're just waiting for the final configuration pieces to get done and checked in. And what are, one of the other points I want to make in this is show you how easy it is. I just set up a demo. You're like, all right, Rob, you got it. Everything was, was great and you scripted it. What if I need to patch or fix? Very important point and it's part of what we've considered in the design. So in this case, if we wanted to, we could take uh, the central, we could turn it, we could actually turn them all off so nobody goes through it, auto accidentally gets patched and updated, but if I come into central, I could go through and I can say, you know what, I don't want site base 412. What I actually want to do is go in, build my system up, and say I would like to have, keep clicking the wrong things, site, I want to upgrade the system to 412. So this will go in and then patch all of the content, digital rebar itself, because it's included in that, in that content pack. Um, and it'll make it go. If I click apply version sets enabled, it'll actually do it all in one pass. So in this case, it's going to figure out the missing work that has to be done. So a couple of things have to be added. And then it will go through and fix central to match that new schema. Okay, and you can see I missed something. What did I miss the credential set? So let's add that back in. And it'll come through and figure out what, what needs to get done in this case. Uh, order does matter although these don't, don't overlap, so we should be fine. And I want to take a moment just to show you what that looks like, because uh, it's important to see it. So in Sitebase 4.1, what you'll notice here is this is Sitebase 4.1, and it set DRP version 4.1.1, and then it set the different content packs to also use 4.1.1. Uh, in 4.1.2, we made changes obviously to make it 412, but I could have made this uh, hit or miss. I could have made it different changes. And if I pick tip, it actually can go and get live versions of the system and pull them in um, and do a patch. So I could actually turn this one system, and that's exactly what I'm doing. I could turn this one central system into my test infrastructure and test the new version before I roll it out more generally to all of the other sites. Literally, this is my continuously integrated lab environment where I'm making sure everything looks good before I roll it to any other sites. And let me give you an idea of um, what that would, so we're going through this, this system. This is no longer central, this is east. So I'd have to go back to central to show you what central looks like. Uh, we already have tokens, so I'm logging in. It's upgraded to 412. All of the changes have been made to 412. I can go in, test, and, and make sure things look good um, from that perspective. Uh, it's a hugely important component because when we're talking about running these data centers, we're not talking about just installing software, bootstrapping it, and dealing with your day zero problems. Although this is a huge component to make that easy. But what we really think about here 
is what does it look like on day two? What does it look like on day 30 when you actually have to make all the systems work? This is what allows you to build that whole infrastructure. Uh, and one of the things that we pointed out in the, in the setup video, it's important is the actual catalog, all of the pieces and parts are coming from digital rebar. They're not coming from um, the internet. So for example, if you're using uh, Yum or apt installs, you create local copies. I hope you create local copies of the repos of the things that you do so that you have a cache to copy. You're not dependent on the internet to maintain your versions. Digital rebar enables you to do the same thing so that you can actually uh, cache and store and ma manage the versions that are necessary to run your data center infrastructure. You're not dependent on anything external. It's very important for us and uh, how all those pieces work. And you'll see even the binary pieces, we track all the way down into the um, binary components of necessary to run the system. So, wow, quite a bit uh, in here. And that's a big important part for us. If you're running this infrastructure, we don't want you to have to go to the internet, rely on internet connectivity. Everything is actually able to be baked into the manager. You can uh, save this, copy it, um, manage it in many different ways to create a secure, reliable environment for provisioning your infrastructure. Uh, and so at this point, we're, we're pretty much done and ready. Um, you can see in my jobs log, I can actually tell where operations are running. Uh, it's pretty exciting stuff. Um, and let's see. Oh, I think I have not, I need to update. Okay, this is central, so we we're checking out here. Excellent. All right, so let me recap the what we've shown you a little bit. Uh, we have shown uh, building out this whole infrastructure all the way through to installing Kubernetes in parallel in multiple data centers from the manager. Uh, we've shown you how we actually built that infrastructure and had it checked in and got live updates in a single pane of glass. We showed how we used the multi-site management features to synchronize and update and manage all of the digital rebar endpoints, including day two changes and patches. Um, and then in the stage, in the setup videos, we actually walk through how we actually completely automate the process of bringing a digital rebar infrastructure up. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, that is the end of this summary section. Please go in and check out how we bootstrapped all this stuff and set it up and got to this point that we could do it. And then check back later as we build in all of the individual chapters and deep dive into exactly what components go in and take you through the code and YAML sections I was showing you in detail so that you can replicate this experience yourself. If this is interesting, please, please if you check out, definitely check out our um, original video talking about the presentation in general, but join us in Slack, contact us. Um, this is really fun stuff. We really think this changes the way people operate data centers. It reduces toil, but actually just raises the bar on, on how data center operations is managed at a fundamental level. And we want you to be able to participate with us. Thank you very much. This is Rob Hirschfeld with Racket.